Technology enables us to access so many resources, not only in our daily lives, but in our careers as interior designers as well. With the advent of technology, software such as Revit and AutoCAD enable us to create more accurate and advanced drawings as architects and designers. A normal concern from here would be, is drawing then not a dying tool? I'm a huge believer in sketching and using this as a form to communicate and train the critical mind. Sketching is a way in which these industry professionals process their thoughts and ideas. The role of sketching or drawing is the birth to your ideas and projects. This is the tool that we use to explore and explain our ideas. Some may even argue that sketching holds the final idea and detail to any project. Can you imagine that a small pencil will lead to your final project? Sketching offers an infinite amount of possibilities. As you can see, this is the start to developing. Just a quick recap of our second lesson. We covered all you need to know about your plan drawings and how to draw them up yourselves. These plans are our building blocks and will give us a very nice grounding for our lesson three. So our focus for today's lesson is we introduce you to sections and elevations. We look at the sketch versions of these drawings and how they fit into our timeline. We jump on the vital information associated with these drawings, as well as some of the key information that you would find on one of these drawings. We look at sketching up your very own internal elevation. So by the end of this lesson, you will have mastered the first steps to interior design and will be kitted out with the knowledge to draw up your very own elevation. Right, in order to create our elevations, you will need the following. Please grab some of these items or please grab all of these items and keep them aside as we'll be using them towards the end of the lesson. Firstly, your trusty sketchbook. Then you'll need various pens and pencils. A ruler or scale ruler. So this is for the people that are feeling brave and I'll explain this towards the end of the lesson. You can grab your plans that we drew up in lesson two. You'll need a large surface area to draw and feel creative. And last but not least, and you know something that I always say in my lessons, a nice quiet space. Let's get in the groove and begin designing. If you recall, we have drawn up our 2D floor plans in lesson two, or as I call them, our communication plans. We learned sketching techniques in lesson one as well. Can you remember? These drawing types, our plan, elevation, and section, would generally be used in your meetings with clients or on site, or basically any meeting where you need to share a quick idea. A plan, elevation, and section drawing usually are drawings that go hand in hand. So without your plan, you're not able to accurately communicate your width and depth of a project. Without your elevation and section, you're not able to communicate vertical aspects of the space or the height associated to that space. Let's look at a quick example. Fred is the owner of an apartment who has contacted you, the interior designer in this case, to assist him in looking at an interior space and layout of his apartment. He's just not happy with it. At this point, my approach would be to investigate the apartment by visiting Fred and discussing with him what he had in mind. This is a really good idea to get to know your client's needs. Using my trusty sketchbook and pen, I will sketch up Fred's existing apartment's floor plan while sitting with him so we can make sure we're both on the same page. After our meeting, and possibly some time spent on the design development side, I would then digitize my sketch design using my desired software. So in this case, I would probably start with AutoCAD, which we are definitely going to learn, but probably towards your module four. Remember guys, these drawings are not your professional drawings for presentational purposes. These drawings are what? Can any of you tell me? Pop your answers into your Morpheus text box in the right hand corner of your screen. Yes, these drawings are your communication drawings, not to be confused with your presentation and professional drawings. These are your tools for communication in the early stages of your project or tools for when you're trying to discuss any of your project ideas. So guys, Fred has come back to us and he's asked us to show him 
a pattern or layout for picture frames that he would like to hang on his passage wall. Do you know which drawings we would use to communicate this? Pop your answers into your Morpheus text box in the right hand corner of your screen. The correct answer is your internal elevation or your sections. As we know, these drawings show us the vertical elements to your project. I'm going to share a handy tip with you or a tip of the trade. So try to avoid giving out any of your ideas to your clients before your project contracts have been signed and agreed on. We really don't want to give out any of our designs to be abused or taken without any compensation. So this is quite a common element in the design world and in fact quite a negative element. Designers are not yet valued for their intellectual copyright. This is probably the most valuable tip anyone ever shared with me and I will go into more detail about this as we get into your contracts later towards your module 3 and module 4. Right, back to business. Elevations, sections and plans are types of drawings that we use to convey information about a building in a 2D format and sometimes 3D, but we'll touch on that as we get along this lesson. So we use a combination of these three drawings and many more, but for today's purposes, these three drawings during the schematic phase. As you know, the schematic phase is part of our design process that we learned in lesson one. Let's break things down. An elevation. What is an elevation? Most of you by now should have an idea of what an elevation is from our lesson two. But can you remember? So your elevation drawings are generally 2D drawings, but can be 3D if we're looking at presentational drawings. And they're drawing of a 3D object from a vertical plane showing vertical descriptions. So in simple terms, your elevation is a view from the side of a 3D object. We will use our elevations to show sides of buildings. So if your building has four sides, we would generally use one elevation per side of the building. You would then land up with four elevations. When drawing an elevation, you are essentially representing one side of the wall. This would include any windows or doors, as well as any built-in furniture that is in direct contact or has a relationship with the wall. An elevation is typically referred to as an exterior view when we do not need to cut through a wall to see internal space. Here are some key characteristics to your elevation drawings. Firstly, they are generally 2D view, but as you can see in this image, if we're getting a little bit creative, we can do 3D view. So I would essentially use my 2D view for construction drawings or more technical versions. Our 3D views I would be using as a presentational format drawing. Then our elevation shows us the side of an object, as we learned. It shows us a vertical plane. And because it shows us a vertical plane, it gives us a great sense of the height of your projects or buildings. So in this case, you can see this is quite a tall building and probably has about two to three levels to it. So now we know that elevations depict a vertical plane of any 3D object. Elevations are therefore not common only to buildings, but can be created from almost anything. Let's look at some examples to see if we can explain what we're talking about. Firstly, I've got an elevation of an apple, which is the side view of this apple. I then have an elevation of a dog, again a side view of a dog. And lastly, we're looking at an elevation of a house. So this is a side view of one of the sides of the house. In our case, for the purpose of interior design, an elevation drawing is both of external and internal appearance, showing sides of the building. When we're drawing up external elevations, a general rule of thumb would be one elevation drawn per side of the building. For example, four elevations would be drawn, one for each side of a four-sided building. Internal elevations, however, would only exist if we're looking at a specific wall that we're wanting to draw up in elevation, not so much looking at the detail of how the space fits into the project. So, an internal elevation would be looking at a wall that we're not cutting through a space. Um, so as we know, if we're cutting through a space, a section would then come into play. The correct way to draw up an internal wall in relation to the rest of the space is in fact with our section drawings. Simply put, 
A section cuts, an elevation does not. So, what is a section then? A section is your 2D drawing depicting a slice of a 3D building or object. This is also vertical descriptions of the sides of a building or object, but it is one that has been cut through a space showing what lies within, and therefore shows us more detail of a room. A section line can be cut from any part of the space, depending on what you would like to show. Let's have a look at some of the key descriptions describing our sections. So as we know, our section is a 2D view, generally 2D, but again can be 3D for presentational purposes. It shows us the side of an object, and with that shows us internal elevations or internal elements. It's a vertical plane. It's a slice through an object, so as you can see, we've got a slice through an apple. And lastly, but not least, and probably most importantly, it gives us a sense of height. So, in essence, a slice of an object shows us the detail within the object. Have a look around to see if you can picture an object near you in a section format. This is not an easy task, guys, I'm sure, because it requires the brain to nitpick at any detail. We could have a section of an apple. We could have a section of a car. And we could have a section of a house. So in our case, we'd be looking at houses. But for the purposes of this exercise, can you see how once an object is cut through, we can see a lot more detail than if we were looking at an elevation or just a side view without a cut of an object. So in our case, for the purpose of interior design, this section is generally used to show the internal appearance of the side of a building. So when it comes to how many sections we draw, my general rule of thumb is to draw as many sections as you feel comfortable that all the correct and sufficient heights, details and information have been included so your builder or your client are able to fill in the pieces or the picture of what's going on. Can you see in this building how it's been sliced through? So because of the slice, we can see the walls, we can see the furniture, we can see staircase detailing, and probably one of my most important aspects would be to see levels within the building. Right, guys, so elevations and sections, as you probably are questioning now, they have many similarities, but I think there's one main defining difference between the two of them. Can any of you tell me? If you could pop your answers into your Morpheus text box, that would be great. Right, so let's look at them. Firstly, one of the similarities is that they are both generally 2D views, but again, for the purposes of presentation drawings, they can be 3D views. They are a vertical plane or a vertical description of an object or project, and they show us heights. What do you guys think the main difference is? So the main difference is, is that the section is a slice through of an object or building, whereas your elevation is not. Right, let's do a quick recap. Sections are viewed through the space as if the viewer were able to slice the building at a certain point and examine what's inside that building. So it gives us a lot more detail. Remember, don't forget, our floor plans are also sections, with a cut plan being horizontal and viewed from be down below, as if you were looking down on into a box or into the space. Both the section and elevation drawings are used to convey information to the builder or your client that would be necessary for construction, or would be necessary for someone to be able to work on a project or design without having viewed the space. Sections come into play and are useful to show vertical relationships that are not visible in your elevations such as the way the floor tiles meet, or the way the floor meets a certain space, or dimensions. There are so many more that we'll start covering as we get through this module. Now we know what elevations and sections are, let's look at some of the tools that we can use to draw up these communication drawings. Here's a list of some of the software that I use. You're obviously not limited to these, so feel free to use any others, but these have just worked best for me in no order of importance. Firstly, we hand sketch. So this is an amazing tool. It comes into play in probably all phases of your project design timeline. 
So I find that the client really likes to see hand sketches and so they're starting to make more and more of an appearance in the design world. A great aspect of hand sketching is that it really improves our critical eye. The next tool is a program that I use quite a lot called AutoCAD. It's a computer-aided software used to create both 2D and 3D architectural drawings. So we would use this program to draw up plans for elevations, sections, or any planning drawings during the planning process. You could also use AutoCAD as a means to sketch up ideas. Thirdly, we have a program called SketchUp. This is generally used for your 3D modeling, but can be used to create 2D drawings when in a rush. This is, however, not my first choice for 2D drawings. And lastly, but not least, we have a program called Revit. This is also a computer-aided software, which I use to get my drawing packs out and detailing out for client approval and construction phase. It has a very similar output of drawing style to AutoCAD. You can use either AutoCAD or Revit, um, but I will leave that up to you and we'll touch on that in our module four. We will look at using all of these tools and how they fit into the design phases towards the end of our module. But for today, we're going to be focusing on our first tool, our hand sketching. Most of these programs and tools for drawing are almost all used across the lifespan of an interior designer's project at different phases. For example, we may start off by sketching our plans in our briefing phase, but by the time we're on our construction phase, we would still be working with our sketch plan. But at this point, we'd be converting our sketch communication drawings into presentational floor plans on your AutoCAD software or potentially your Revit software. We may even bring these floor plans into 3D SketchUp and start working with our 3D modeling. Quite an exciting phase of the project. So given the above knowledge you've learned about our phases, can you tell me which phase you think the hand sketching of one's elevations would come into play? I have actually mentioned this, guys, but do you remember? There is no right or wrong answer here. As you know, sketching would come into every phase of our design cycle. But for today's lesson, we are going to focus on our schematic phase. Let's do a recap of our design timeline and see how sketching is relevant in each phase. So firstly, we'd be obtaining your brief. You could be sketching your project ideas as you're talking to your client. In phase two, we've got our schematic design. This could be gathering all of our project information from sketching plans and elevations to sections and 3D sketches. Phase three is our concept development phase, and this is a very sketchy phase as you move from your design ideas into your concept. I always have my pens and pencils handy at this point. Phase four is our construction documentation phase, and sketching is a real winner at this point. If you're sketching your ideas before you put them to computer, you almost always understand them 100 times better. Phase five is your admin and on-site phase. This is probably the least of the sketchy phases or drawing phases, but you'll often get a contractor asking to look at some detail or maybe even your client looking at detail during the snagging points. For today's challenge and our drawing purposes, we will be jumping into the schematic design phase with our sections and elevations. Let's recap this phase. So the schematic phase gives us clarity on the vision of the space or project. It helps us or it is the phase in which we gather all the relevant information about our project, for example, our site surveys and our briefs. And it's definitely the phase in which we start formulating our strategy. The most important phase, in my opinion. Given that we have gathered all of our information for Fred's room in our schematic design phase, we are going to dig a little bit deeper and look at our elevations and sections and what information you can expect to find in these drawings. Let's take a look at some of the key information that these drawings include and what they tell us. We start off by looking at the key characteristics evident in a section and elevation drawing. Take note as you will be using this throughout our lesson. Firstly, a simple elevation drawing might show the outline of the building. So this is a general outline of the structure of the building and what you can expect. It would show us openings of windows and doors or entrances and exits. It would show us the pipes and gutters and small details on the building. 
we'd get a good idea of the building levels, so how many levels to the building or what level the building sits on. It would show us the dimensions and heights. And last but not least, the exterior detailing, so the finishes on our external walls. Let's have a look at this example and let's see if we can pinpoint some of the key facts or information that this elevation shows us. I'd like you guys to give it a try, so if you can pop some of your key points into your Morpheus text box, I'm going to give you a moment. So, I can see the building outline. We get a really good picture of what this building looks like. We can see the windows and doors and the garage, which I'm assuming here. We get a good idea of the building levels. However, our section would definitely show us the internal building levels. We get a good idea of our exterior detailing, so the railings or window frames, and you can see some little planters and patio areas. And lastly but not least, and probably one of my favorite points, we can see our exterior finishes. So what the walls have been painted with or cladded with, um, you can see quite a nice stone detailing around the edge of the garage. Not all elevations need to show great amounts of detail. This would be determined by which phase of the project timeline you're in or how much detail would be required for that project. For example, in Fred's scenario with his lounge, I would probably leave out all my notes and dimensions if I'm using my elevation to discuss the project with Fred and if he's sitting in the meeting with me. However, if I'm sending Fred's lounge drawing this out for construction or to be quoted on by a team, I would include every stitch of information that I could possibly put onto my drawing. Remember that your contractors are not able to see the space. Your drawings are there to be their eyes. Let's look at some of the key characteristics to our section drawings. These drawings can be useful, as we know, as they give us a view through the space. It also shows us great relationships between the different parts of the building. These might not be apparent in our elevations. So firstly, a simple section drawing would show us section cuts. These indicate the point at which the building has been cut for section purposes, and this would be called your section plane. They would show us external versus internal and the relationship between the two. They show us openings such as windows and doors and also shows us internal windows and internal doors. It shows us where the building would join or again different levels to the building. It would give us a good idea of dimensions and heights and levels within the building. And it shows us exterior detailing as well. Let's look at this example of a section. Here are some of the points and key characteristics that I'm picking up on the section. Did you pick these up too? So, firstly, we see the internal view of both buildings. We get a good idea of where the doors and windows are and internal walls. We're able to see or gauge the ratio of heights in the building. So although we don't have dimensions, the ratios and scale of the drawing is clear. Again, we see the levels. So I can count there's three levels to the top one, and I'm looking at two levels to the bottom drawing. And although we can't clearly see what finishes are used, we can see an idea of the finishes and decor within the space. So it's quite a simple, calm finish and mood. Let's take a look at why we think elevations and section drawings would be created or drawn up or what purpose they serve. So firstly, they would be used to keep information or survey existing buildings. They would be used to communicate information on site to contractors or clients. They would be used to apply to council or city planning for building permission or permits. We would use them to record information, so you might be drawing up your surveys now with information and only using your drawings in two or three years' time. They would be used to construct, so you would actually be able to build from these drawings. And last but not least, and probably one of my favorites, they can also be used as marketing tools. So remember we spoke about 2D and 3D elevations and sections. 
you could use your 3D elevations and sections to market property going on the market, show clients more information about buildings, and so much more. So with our drawings, and when we are drawing them up, there are some techniques that we need to learn and understand about them. One of these techniques is line weights. You may have heard me referring to line weights before a couple of times during the past few lessons, but do any of you actually know what I mean by a line weight? What is a line weight? So the definition of a line weight is the visual lightness and darkness or the heaviness of a line within a drawing. In any architectural drawings, from a sketch to construction drawings, the line weights are usually used to communicate depth and importance as well as proximity of the line or object that you are trying to draw. So in simple terms, the line weight is the weight of the line within the drawing. For example, a wall would be a heavier line than your bar stool or a chair in a plan view. This is because the wall is much heavier, it's got greater value to the project and often much taller than your smaller line weights or thinner line weights. So, why are line weights important? Firstly, they make the drawings much easier to read and to understand, and it makes it much faster to read and understand. So, when on site, looking at a drawing, you are able to tell exactly what you're looking at at any stage of the project. This is done by using different thicknesses of the line to give the illusion of depth and importance. This is where I coin the term, or this is where we coin the term, the line weight. The rule of thumb to follow with your line weights is the closer the object, the darker the line, or the further away the object, the lighter the line. This is because you would read a thicker line or heavier line as being close to you, whereas your lighter lines you would read in the background. This is particularly important for making sense of perspective drawings, as you can see in the example here. It would show us a good idea of depth in these drawings and particularly with our elevations and sections where our space is very flat. So how do we use our line weights or how do we read our line weights? The weight of a line is the reference to the contrast of the line against your background, not necessarily the actual thickness of the line. These line weights can be shown through different line intensities, thicknesses, and sometimes even patterns. For example, your dashes or dots or hash patterns. We don't only use line weights when we're drawing by hand, but all of our computer-aided software that we have have built-in systems for generating and managing line weights in their drawings. Crazy, hey? We will get to this in our Module 4. Let's determine which line weights we would use for what in our drawings. You can purchase any fine liners with different nib thicknesses from your local stationery shop or supermarket. My preferred brand would be the art liner or a fine liner, um, but you are welcome to use whichever pens that you want. If you can, it would be best to try them all out and to get a feel of which pen suits you best. So I would start off with three pens and they would be as follows. You would have your heavier pen, your medium pen or your light pen. So as you can see, your heavier pen would be a 0.5 millimeter thickness for me. And this pen I would use to draw up my boundary or my profile lines, for example, my wall, as you can see in my example. You would also use this to draw closer profiles to give an idea of depth. My medium pen would be my 0.3 millimeter or 0.2 millimeter nib thickness. And this would be used to draw up items that don't require too much fine detail, um, but they're also a prominent aspect in your drawing. So it would be probably my internal walls as opposed to my external walls and maybe a couple of my fixed furniture items. I may even use this line weight to draw up some of my notations. My light line weight would be my 0.05 millimeter pen or my 0.1 millimeter pen. And this I would use to draw up my very fine detail some detail that may show up as a blob of ink when you're printing your drawing. So, for example, I would probably use this to draw up my sink or my taps, a leg of a furniture piece, or very fine notes or details. So, a rule of thumb with line weights, I would stick to three line weights or pens. I would use my heavy, my medium, and my light. 
you need to always be consistent. So with your line weights or your line thicknesses, always use them for the same elements across all your drawings. For example, your wall would always be your 0.5 millimeter thickness in all of your drawings. And thirdly, don't overcomplicate your drawings. Keep them simple. Line weight thicknesses and what they're used for is part art, part personal preference, and part of what the company you're working for wants your standards to look like. Don't panic, guys. These line weights are going to be covered again in your module three. This is just to give you a good idea and an understanding and a foundation before we start drawing up our elevations. Right, so before we get into our sketching and carry on with this lesson, I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek into what you can expect for your lesson four. In our next lesson, we are going to be getting into our design principles, which is really going to round up our lessons to this point. We are going to look at how practically apply these principles to your own home or any projects that you may be working on. Stay tuned. Right, so you may have a question here. Why do we have to do these drawings by hand if we can create them on computer in a more technically accurate way? Right, I'm sure you've all had this thought. I certainly did at the beginning stages of my course. Well, there's a lot to be said and to gain from learning to link your drawings in terms of line weights and the understanding of the process of the drawing and detailing. The drawing phase may even bring aspects that are not noticeable in computer-generated phases. So now that you've got a better understanding, let's start drawing. Here's a list of information I'm going to share with you about what needs to be on your drawings. Before I get going, can any of you tell me what you think may need to be on your elevation drawings? You can pop your answers into the Morpheus text box. Here is a very high level list that we can use to build on through our course. Firstly, we'll need our elevation line or our ground line. We'd need to add in our floors and ceilings. So as you can see on the example, we've got a very clear floor line. We will add our walls and windows and our doors. So any entrances or exit points. We would add our roof and detailing. So maybe even including the finishes to your roof structure. We would add our dimensions, so obviously not necessary for all drawings, but as a rule of thumb, try and add as much vertical dimension as possible. We would add our notes and symbols, so you can see in our elevation, the drawing is notated for the viewer to read it easier. And then we've got scale. So again, not every drawing will have scale, but a general rule of thumb, try and include a scale. Right, let's look at a scenario. Claire is our client and she has asked for some assistance with her living room. She doesn't have any curtains and she wants to know where we as designers would suggest that she hangs the curtains in location to her door. Are we able to help her? What drawing do you guys think we would use? So we would definitely go with our internal elevation drawing. We would look at the lounge wall in elevation what it looks like at this point, and use this drawing to communicate to her where we would suggest the curtain should be positioned. We'll work graphically using our critical eye as we have not yet covered measurements. Remember, Claire's plan from lesson two, we're going to be using this as our base. So your plan is going to give you your width and the correct spacing. Your client Claire has provided you with two heights. The ceiling height, which you've got at 2.6 millimeters in height to the underside of your ceiling. And then we've got the top of the door frame height, which is 2.00 millimeters. You can simply add these dimensions in the correct location on your drawing. So for the purposes of this drawing and not to scare you off permanently, we're going to be focusing on drawing up an elevation and not a section at this point. We have also not yet covered measurements and scale, so you've got two options here. You can firstly either use your eye to scale the drawings, so see if you're able to use my example to create your own drawings so that they look as proportional as possible, or 
Option two is to attempt to use your ruler or scale ruler, if you're feeling brave, to convert the dimensions into the correct scale or ratio of the drawing. Please, guys, only do this if you are familiar with scaling. And if you aren't, don't worry, this will be covered in lesson or excuse me, module two and module three of your course. So just to recap, we know that our door height is 2.1 and just a useful tip, a standard door height is usually 2.100 millimeters from your finished floor level of the building. She has also given us a ceiling height of 2.6. With all of our drawings, we are going to be making use of our drawing checklist. Let's look at the drawing checklist for our elevation drawing. Just a note to mention, remember we are going to be drawing up our communication elevations. This is the first phase of your project. We are defining the space with our critical eye. There is no need to be able to be measuring at this point. Think about it. You're in a meeting with Claire and she says, where do I hang my curtains? We want to work as fast and quick as possible and use what we know to create the quick communication sketch that we've been discussing. Accuracy here is not the aim. The aim is to provide as much information as possible. So our step one is setting up our plan. Step two, we're going to project or bring up our lines. Step three is give ourselves a base and a ceiling for our drawings. Step four is to add our doors, windows, and detailing. Step five would be adding your dimensions. So in this case would be your heights of 2.1 and 2.6 millimeters. And step six is to neaten up our drawing and add our notes. Right, so we have step one, setting up our plan. You can set up your plan with the wall that you're going to be elevating facing towards the blank page. So for the purpose of this exercise, I've redrawn the portion of the plan to sit at the bottom of my elevation. As you can see, you can use your plan that you created in lesson two, tape it with a piece of masking tape to the bottom of your page, if that's easier. So your plan must be turned that, so that the wall you're elevating sits parallel to your drawing. Can you guys see in the example? Right. Step two, projecting your lines. The lines of your plan are going to determine the width of your space. Project the walls and the edges of the building upwards, as I've done in my example, into the blank space above. Use the walls of the plan as a guideline to project the lines towards creating a shell of the building. So as you can see, I've got four lines and that basically creates the shell of my elevation. Then we get to our step three, give yourself a base and a ceiling. Once you've done your vertical lines, you will now add your horizontal lines. Start by drawing your floor in. This is simply a horizontal line that indicates the starting point to your floor. As we're not working with measurements, you will use your eye to gauge the proportional distance between the floor and the ceiling, as I've done in this drawing. I've also added a little ceiling note and a floor note. That's just to make it easier. You don't need to add it at this point. Then we have step four, add all your details. So we're going to be adding our details and floors and windows. Once you've done your projection lines, we've got our size. You can add the floors and windows by drawing horizontal lines. Don't worry if you're unsure of the measurements. Generally, we would be using our scale ruler to convert the dimensions to readable proportions on our page. You have got your width and your standard door heights. You can proportionally add these in. If you are familiar with your scale ruler and you have opted to use it at this point, you can work with a ratio of one to five. So one meter in reality is equal to five centimeters on your drawing. You can use a standard ruler or scale ruler. If you're unsure, don't worry, we will cover this in our next lessons. Step five, add your dimensions. So your client has already provided you with the heights. Use these to add them to your drawing. A dimension is your parallel line in relation to the object that you are giving the dimension to. This will also be covered in your site surveying section in module two. So this brings us to step six, our final step. You can start to neaten up your drawing with pens and adding notes. So you'll see I'm retracing all my drawing with a fine liner obviously in the line weights that we discussed. So you'll see my external wall is my hard line weight or my 
heavier line weight and I use my medium line weight for my detailing. And once I've done that, I've taken an eraser just to neaten up and remove any pencil markings. Any notes that you feel are pertinent to your drawing, add them in your medium pen set in your neatest handwriting. You can even use a stencil to generate your letters. Right guys, so this brings us to today's lesson challenge. There is a commonly said phrase, you can either do 10 things well, or you can do one thing amazingly. This is a principle applied to drawing. Focus on the drawing and keep practicing it. Not so that it becomes the best drawing ever, but so that it becomes something that you feel comfortable with. The beauty is in your style. Let's practice our sketching and elevation. Claire will be your client and you are now going to draw her elevation of her door in her lounge area. You can use the same plan that you worked off from lesson two.